Dr. Stephen Farmer is world renowned author, teacher, shamanic practitioner, and soul healer. He is the author of several best selling books and other products, including Earth Magic, Earth Magic Oracle Cards, Animal Spirit Guides, Sacred Ceremony, Power Animal Oracle Cards, Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides Oracle Cards. Power Animals, and Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides, Guided Meditation CD. In addition, Dr. Farmer is also a licensed psychotherapist, retired, former college professor, Reiki master, and an ordained minister in the Circle of Sacred Earth Church. He brings a wealth of skills and experience to his writing, teaching, and spiritual healing offering clients a unique and powerful synthesis of his many years of experience as spiritual psychotherapist, shamanic practitioner, and hypnotherapist to afford quick and effective results. Dr. Farmer's education includes a BA in psychology from the University of California, an MA in counseling psychology from Chapman University, and a PhD from Madison University. Welcome, Dr. Stephen Farmer. My goodness, I'm impressed, Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it's good to join you finally. You know, looking forward to meeting you. So this is great. This is delicious. So you are the author of the book, Animals, these right. incredible sacred messages we receive from animals. So what is a spirit animal? Uh, often get that question, Valerie. And um, spirit guides show up in a number of ways as you well know you know they they can show up in uh, etheric ways like a dream that uh, happens or angels or ancestors but what i found i was just been called to this like we discussed briefly earlier is you know it really was a calling uh, and it started out be uh, because of my training in shamanism my initiation and my initial training in shamanism where um I had to review an experience I had about three years before this initial, it was a two day workshop that just started the ball rolling. And then I did a lot of other trainings, but about four years prior to that, Valerie, I had been in a men's uh, workshop, you know, about 30 men and the facilitator did this fascinating exercise where, where a particular animal would come to you. I didn't even couch it as a spirit animal and the animal that came to me, was snake oh very interesting um and i i like snakes you know i used to uh my daughter uh i have two daughters my youngest daughter had a boa constrictor that she got somewhere and then she moved out of the house and so uh she gifted it to me you know or so that i'd be a steward anyway mm -hmm. i didn't know anything about spirit animals at that time i i was just kind of on the edge of diving into shamanism you know as, as this is the next step you know in your in your work and um in retrospect snake has continued to be with me as one of my primary spirit animals um snake has to do as you can imagine you know you think about the characteristics about shedding you know yeah. often snake images will appear it led me to uh, investigating more and more a great book about uh, it called the cosmic serpent oh uh, yeah. Jer yeah it's great you, you might be interested in it, but his Jeremy Narby, anthropologist, straightforward anthropologist, went down to the uh, Amazon basin, oh. uh, did a ceremony with the ayahuasca and saw oh. snake images, which is very common. Plus, the spirit of, of the plant is a serpent. Is a serpent. That's, a the, that's the heart of the mother. Is a serpent. Yes. An actual serpent. Yes. Yes. So uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? I experienced it in ayahuasca journeys. You saw the serpent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Very, very common. That happens quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he experienced it too. And he went, wow, you know, and did this exhaustive investigation into the number of cultures that have snake images, symbols, etc., including, of course, in the United States, the double helix or the, the, the I'll get to the double helix. But the caduceus, you know, intertwined yeah. snakes with, the, I think it's the eagle on top too, but 
intertwined snakes and, and then went, wow. Anyway, he concluded that shamans back when, when they would get visions, they would often get visions of snakes either individually or the Ouroboros that eats its tail oh, yes. or the, the intertwined serpents. His premise, uh, the subtitle of the book is DNA and the origins of knowledge. So he proposed something that is fascinating to me, and that's that the early shamans were actually seeing DNA. Oh. They were, but it, they didn't have a reference other than surface. Ah. So long story anyway, just that it led me to, uh, like I said, I look back and I went, wow, it's so, so powerful in so many ways. And you can see even in, that's an image that's also in one of my Oracle cards, Earth Magic Oracle cards, DNA. And it just one thing after the other led to it. Finally, uh, I, I got to show this off. Magnificent. Wow. My only, my only tattoo, and it's it's from a friend of mine in Australia, uh, did this painting, and then I had a tattoo artist, of course, do this. So anyway, yeah, spirit animals. It's just been calling me, calling me, calling me, and that led to the, shaman, uh, the shamanic initiation, the first two-day course that really went, whoa. I went out of there just on fire and you know the rest is history because i did quit my practice my regular practice although i i don't want to throw away the baby with the bathwater. you know i had a lot of good trainings there especially on trauma and trauma recovery etc and um a spirit animal get a long windy windy way you know to your question a spirit animal is or animal spirit guide and i use those terms interchangeably valerie is any animal that comes to you, whether it's a physical animal or a symbol of the animal, like in a dream uh, or on the side of a poster or on the side of a truck, whatever it may be, any animal that comes to you uh, in an unusual way. And mm -hmm. you, you, as the, you as the individual receiving this, you know, it's up to you whether it's unusual or not, really. Sure. Either in an unusual way or like many signs or repeatedly in a short space of time there's something pretty big. And it's just, to put it simply, it's spirit's way of reaching you to give you a message, to give you some guidance. And it's easily, it's pretty easy to learn how to not only identify when something like that happens, but to interpret it, you know, to understand the meaning of it, which we can get to later, but uh, that's a spirit animal. Okay. And now does, a person receive um, a certain spirit animal for their whole life? Do you get spirit animals task oriented? Do you get spirit animals when there's sort of a phase of life you're going through or specific healing or all of the above? How does it actually work in process with, with us? Great, good question. Um, there's other uh, labels or types of spirit animals, a couple others that we might commonly hear. One is called a totem or totem animal. Yes. Another is called a power animal. Yes. Well, there's uh, some subtle differences in the meaning of those two terms. One, and I'll just briefly say about totem. Um, a totem is typically um, <clears throat> often described as that animal that follows you through your lifetime. Often that's, that's considered to be a totem or totem animal. However, another another uh, take on it, another perspective, Valerie, is uh, I have over here on the altar, I have some ceramic figures of um, just, I think there's three spirit animals there that have special significance to me. So that those are totems to me. I think of those as totems. Mm -hmm. Jamie Sams and David Carson, the first Oracle card deck that I was introduced to was called Totem Animals. And it's a great deck, you know, they, they, they drew it from Native American tradition, but it's much more universal than that. The other is that it's a spirit animal, <clears throat> excuse me, a spirit animal that's shared by a community or group or a clan. You know, uh, I heard recently about a 12 step program where they, they took a vote on a spirit animal that they then deemed their totem, which I thought was really, really cool, you know, consistent okay. membership, etc. The other one, though, that is more um, in line with what I think of as a special spirit animal is power animal. 
There are some traditions that believe that you are actually born with a particular spirit animal <clears throat> and that animal will follow you and be with you through your entire lifetime. But in our Western culture, we just, you know, we aren't, there's no training in that. I believe it's just not in touch with it as viscerally in touch with it. Yeah, yeah. And so you can imagine if a child is given uh, information on the animal that is birthed with them, that, mm -hmm. that provides guidance and protection, etc. It'd be great, you know, and I think we're moving, we're moving in that direction. Where I first heard the ter term power animal, though, was guess what, in that two day workshop with Har Michael Harner, who is very the way of the shaman, he's the author of that, and he's also very instrumental in bringing contemporary um, into contemporary world shamanism. And that was because we did a partnership. We partnered up with somebody and they would find your spirit animal, a power animal. And then in turn, you would find their power animal. So someone else didn't have had a blank screen, so to speak. And that's when I really learned what a power animal was. And that power animal that came through was wolf. Wolf. Yes. Is that a common one? Do you find that there are certain animals that are more common as totems? And you hear wolf a lot. Yes. In fact, Sarah <laughs> said I'm laughing, but you'll hear, you'll see why I'm laughing. I didn't say this to the fellow that did this, <clears throat> but in my uh, shadow of arrogance, uh, my first thought was wolf. That's so common. <laughs> 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 like, of course, wolf, everybody. Badger, you know, or, or something that maybe not terribly exotic, you know. But, you know, I say that with uh, all gratitude to wolf yeah. spirit. I think wolf spirit seems to be just very, very powerful, so powerful that a lot of people find themselves drawn. And then we have dogs who, you know, their ancestors supposedly are wolves as well. So there's this sort of slight familiarity when you have a dog as a, a pet that you're mm -hmm. stewarding. So um, yeah, I, I confess to that, and in retrospect, we're talking 30, almost 30 years ago when this happened. Um, I, I feel a little emotional saying this. I am so grateful to Wolf Spirit because I think he saved my butt more than once. Wow. Yeah. So th there goes that shadow, you know, of arrogance, you know, no, accept it. And I do believe, yes, like you, your comment, Valerie, I think that's really right on is that it's, it's a strong spirit guide, you know, and it's, it's not necessarily something that you choose. Yes. It seems to come to you. Is, is that what happens? Yeah. And I, I, it, there's, there's a couple of perspectives. One is, oh, I got wolf. You know, the other is, oh, wolf came to me. But what uh, I think it is interesting, just to put some words on it, because we're both writers, you appreciate words. <laughs> there's this collaborative process in consciousness. I believe very, very strongly, not I believe, I know it, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, that, that did that wolf spirit come to me or did I call wolf spirit unconsciously in some way? Or is there a third kind of perspective? And I think that's an interesting perspective that that's a collaborative, it's a collaboration, like we're frankly doing all the time. All the time with the whole universe. Yes, exactly, exactly. So then, um, not to go into a whole thing about it, but over the, <clears throat> in answer to your uh, question, you described some things about spirit animals. Mm -hmm. Yes, spirit, any an animal that shows up in an unusual way and or repeatedly is a, a animal spirit guide, trying to pro get a message across to you, you know, that is coming from and then through that species. Uh, so the animal spirit guide is representing, let's say if I have a dream of, of a buffalo, I go, whoa, that's okay. What's the meaning of this? You know, that, that, that symbol of Buffalo in my dreams is, um, really a couple of different ways to say it is representing the collective consciousness of that species or another term is oversoul. Oh, the oversoul of that wolf. species. Yeah. Or the, the oversoul mm, of wolf. Mm. or the oversoul, like okay. this morning, taking my dog for a walk. Uh, out in the park, a little hummingbird. Oh, hummingbird. One came three times to my window the other day. Okay. Right here, three times. And I, I yeah. paid close attention. Okay, great. Well, did you get a, a message? I'm curious. Mom. That was mom. My mom's on the other side. 
That was oh, the first okay. one that came to me was mom. Yeah. Which is another thing, another um, how that happens, how this works is our beloved deceased loved ones, you know, ancestors. Uh, can I, there's a couple ways to think, well, that's mom, you know, or that she's sending a messenger saying, hey, it's cool. For me, the message was very clear because um, it was just very clear uh, from Hummingbird. Lighten up. What was it? Lighten Do you up. Hear it? Just lighten up. Wow. Mine was uh, your love that there is a tension to, like, you're not forgotten. You're love, we're going around tending to everyone. It was like, she was right at the window, like. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> that's sweet, right. that's sweet. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. So, so there, that's oh, a, a there, go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Well, I was gonna ask another question, continue. Well, um, so anyway, there are a couple of questions that do come up about power animals. I'm going to call them power animals. And it doesn't matter whether you're interested in shamanism or not. That's not the point. You know, if there is a particular spirit animal that really walks with you through your life. Mm. You know, maybe five years, might be 30 years, might be your whole life. You know, I, it just depends. Uh, a real quick, for instance, is Owl was the next one that came to me as a practicing psychotherapist great medicine because owls oh, gift, wisdom. yes yes owl. wisdom seeing in the dark in the dark you know working with the shadows speaking of shadow you know that that often that's a theme that shows up in psychotherapy yes so that was great owl thank you owl uh last year last summer i haven't se seen or heard from her but uh an owl came about oh i oh, period about five six weeks and would we'd be out there? I'd be. I'd step out. And we'd be singing back and forth to each other. It was beautiful. I didn't know owls could sing. Hoo -hoo. Oh, the hoo hoo! Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then, you, what you just heard is I would. I would and sing. You could say it back to to. Yeah, the that's owl. what I. That's what I was calling singing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love I'll, that. I'll step back out of the picture after I put aside my therapy practice. Uh, to pursue this uh, shamanic healing. And then uh, I can't even remember how, I don't remember how, but tortoise came in mm -hmm. as another power animal. So now we got uh, snake, wolf, owl, tortoise. Tortoise. Owl got bumped out of the nest by raven. <laughs> oh, Raven's a powerful one. Woo! You got it, Valerie. You know, she Raven has just been amazing. So each one tends to serve a slightly different function or 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 their purpose or their medicine. But those are the that's how this works. I wanted to share that because this is how this works. You know, you may have one power, it's okay, one power animal, one main spirit animal that follows you for the rest of your life. I know Raven's gonna take me to the other side. I know it. Wow. I just know it. You know, that's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's what I, and what I teach a lot mainly is about spirit animals and receiving guidance. That's that's primary in the book, Animals, uh, the personal tales, similar to what you're doing with which mm -hmm. are stories from other people about their encounters, you know, and what they've received. We have had so many encounters mm -hmm. with with here more with critters than ever in my entire life. And um, I currently live in the Yucatan, Mexico, and the Yucatan is pretty much a rainforest, pretty much. And we've carved out, you know, houses. And if we don't beat back the bushes and the trees, I'm sure that they would engulf our whole houses in a matter of months. Like we're always <laughs> trimming anything because it's just like nature is coming for us. You know? yeah. And um, we see a lot of critters here, um, hummingbirds. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of critters. And um, that's one of the ongoing conversations in the Facebook group of people that have relocated from the United States to this particular part of Mexico, Yucatan, where it's very, you know, where just the, the, the whole rainforest, kind of like an Amazon thing. Yeah. We take actual literal pictures of these things because we've never seen these things before. Wow. And so it's, it's almost like if you move from where you're accustomed to, and maybe you're kind of blinded to the animals that are around us all the time. 
would you say that if you move to a new place and now you have a whole bunch, especially if you go far, there are a whole bunch of different animals now that could come to yeah. you. And yeah. how does that play into it? Well, here's here. Let me let me do a teaching. Okay, on this, this is what yes. I commonly teach. Yeah, a lot of people say, "Well, how do you know what it means? Mm -hmm. you know, how, do you, how do you discern the message?" And uh, here's here's my three possibilities, three different ways you can discern the message. Because that's a good example. You move into a region where you go, "I don't know what kind of bird that is." Yeah, you know, I don't know what that critter is. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. So how do I get a message if I don't have some sense of what they are if i don't Context. have a mark or label right yeah so here's what you, here's the deal as best you can <clears throat> for instance a good example would be a bird okay there may be uh let's say a certain bird that has um resembles an eagle for instance but you go it's not really an eagle but what is it so you might instead of thinking eagle or trying to figure out the name because i don't want you to get caught up in the name uh -huh. yes. um see what you can uh find out about let's say eagle spirit by looking it up that's number one look it up somewhere internet great tool books that are out there not not mine as well as others you know that give suggestions or ideas about how to interpret when a, a toucan shows up you know yeah. we don't see many around dana point i'll tell you that yeah, yeah. or a bear you know what if Bear, not just a bear, but bear spirit shows up in some way. Oh, yeah. But I'm not sure what that means. So look it up. You know, one of my books, Animal Spirit Guides, that's what I did. I went through like 200 and some animals. And one of, one of the sections in it said, might mean this if you, if you see or experience this in an unusual way. You know, like bear might be this, 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 this. So my point being is look it up. <clears throat> second is, Valerie, you could take a, a second way where you go into it a little bit more is observe, study, look up on the internet, you know, the information that describes the characteristics of the animal. Uh -huh. I'll use bear as an example, characteristics, you know, they're big, strong, you don't mess with them typically, especially grizzlies. Mama will just swipe and take you right on out with oh, those. Man, you, you, you're gone, <laughs> on your way. So um, yeah. he would be a great prote protector. And I'm talking about bear spirit. Remember uh, taking my dog years ago to uh, Yosemite, the back back route to Lake Eleanor, and we ran into a bear. And the bear stood up. And I always remember that because one piece for bear that they do stand up to observe. So they stand their ground. You don't mess with them. So wow. the message to you would be: it's time to stand your ground. Oh, stand up and not in physical world. You would back off and let the bear have it yes yeah you but don't it, want to mess yeah you want to mess with a bear yet it, the message is stand up and do that be like that bear the other is that um the female female bear who's pregnant will go and hibernate and that's where the cubs are birthed mm. and there's a metaphor that's what i was trying to say earlier is it's a metaphor for the message oh it's time to withdraw maybe that's it it means that something real creative is about to birth oh you hear the metaphor yeah yes. you know that's what that's what we're looking for for number two now number three this is where it gets interesting and this is what you did i think with hummingbird i think ask direct revelation yes. this animal comes to you in this unusual way like this hum my, for me the hummingbird this morning me immediately bought a smile in fact i get body chills you know yes, you get the, yeah, the, yeah i remember yeah yeah you got it i get uh, that memory just of an hour and a half ago it was so in enlightening <laughs> you know mm. in that okay. way like, lighten up you know it's yeah. okay and i really i felt more buoyant i felt a little bit lighter just in again i get a little emotional even thinking about it. thank you this is the magic of the world yeah. you know so Direct revelation is number three. Uh, you, uh, I, I don't know, you think of some unusual animal like badger and you go, I don't know what badger is and I'm not near a, a book or an internet or something like that. What do I do? You go, close your eyes, take a deep breath and, and just communicate telepathically to badger spirit. Say, badger, what's your message? 
it, it may or may not have anything to do with the characteristics of that, the physical expression of that spirit animal. You know, badger may say uh, something mundane, like, you know, uh, catch up on your bills. Something yeah. that's not in the actual nature of badger. Exactly. That you need in that moment. You got it, Valerie. Well, well uh, stated. Mm. Good listener. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, let's see, what's another? Buffalo. I mentioned buffalo early. Okay. There's certain, um, I would say, standard meanings, you know, of buffalo. You know, abundance is the main one because there was a time when they were um, primary, yeah. yeah, food, you know, for people of the land, you know, that lived with the land. But maybe nothing, you know, the dream I had about buffalo has nothing to do with it. So, buffalo spirit, what's your message? slow down mm. oh has nothing to do with the character not you know anything obvious to do with the characteristics so you get it you get what i'm saying direct revelation i mean i'm sure that's how you operate too you whether it's spirit animals or others that you get messages you know i call them downloads you know and um the the nice thing about spirit animals it's pretty easy to learn the direct revelation is what i really promote a lot because it's applicable to any spirit guides, direct revelation, that you're getting information that helps you along your life path. And having said that, animals are all around. What you described in the Yucatan, you know, they're all around. So accessibility is, I think, a re really key with spirit animals. Mm. This is really beautiful because it's under lining for me the great love of this universe mm. that loves us so much that it will send us a hummingbird, a raven. Uh, it is intentionally loving us and like sending that. us messages and bringing us along the path. That, that is an unfathomable love. Well stated. Yeah, mm. well stated. Yeah, we, I think we are uh, cared for in a lot more ways than we're typically aware of. Mm. You said it very well. It to, be, to be deeply in touch with, this is the love of the universe, giving me a personalized message that I need, not only is it personalized, it's timed. It's timely for what I'm experiencing right here, right now. Yeah, yeah, it... it the other thing is, if you're in doubt about a message you're receiving, ask for more. Oh. Or I, I, what I would rather say, because 95% of my prayers are gratitude, you know, thanks. Yeah. You know, thanks, Raven, for your guidance. Thanks, Wolf, you know, for your protection, etc. So thank you for, uh, I want to really be sure about this. You know, you want me to go where? You want me to go to Iowa? <laughs> you know, travel yeah. to Iowa for what? right right thank you for additional information you know and so and that's when synchronicities happen you know that's when we have the opportunity to experience something that out of the love and care that like you said the universe has for us that it will be provided if that's in fact what you're told to do yeah you know valerie as well i'm sure as well as uh, um, when a message comes through and you don't listen, you don't respond to it. It's like, <laughs> well, I'm going to be in for a roller coaster ride. I do know that much. And like it's not going to be a fun kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stephen, go left. When you get to this corner, go left. But that's not what the GPS but, says. Right. But why? And I don't usually <laughs> know that. Man. What's left? And yeah, yeah, that's me. And I'm an air sign questioning intuition. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I sure do myself, you know, and then it, later I go, there's an old commercial years ago. Um, and it was about a, a commercial product called V8 juice. Oh, V8. I remember. Yeah. And people would oh, go, oh, had a oh, you remember? Yeah. Oh, I should have had a V8. That's kind of how it feels after you don't listen to your what you could say is your intuition or the guidance you receive. Oh, I should have had a V8. Oh, I should have listened, you know. Um, Father Law has a, a saying for that. They call it that everything that happens after we don't listen to the intuitive voice, they call it unnecessary process because it's process that we don't necessarily have to be in 
because we already received the guidance. Hey, go right. So now we're going left and we're probably coming to circle back around and go right anyway, or whatever the case may be. The universe is always going to bring us to where our perfect place is. We can't be in the wrong place yet. I'm going to probably have some unnecessary process in this. Maybe I'm going to have some, and I'm still going to learn some lessons yet. Did I really have to do all of this? Maybe I made some drama for myself and other people. Yeah, I like drama and extra work, you know, and not the kind, not the kind of drama that I'd want, you know, particularly. Exactly. After but, a while, it's, it's no more drama. Mm -hmm. Yes, continue. Yeah. And you know, from the people you work with and yourself, you know, I'm sure that that this this whole thing is really a process. You know, we we stumble, we fall, you know, we forget. Uh, we're. Um, I I remember a wonderful teacher of mine slash mentor that uh, I would have sessions with and we called it psychotherapy, you know, it was a time when I was in one of those cycles of okay time to recover, you know, from a period of suffering. Because I think out of that that's legitimate too. is some a lot of times I think we get movement from a period of suffering, you know, mm -hmm. especially if it's a wake up call. Okay, Stephen. Here you go, you know we're trying to reach you here so sorry about that, you know you stubbed your toe, you got your butt kicked, you know, but. You're still breathing. You still got a pulse. So let's get on with it. You know that kind it's of. Moving. And in I think this we, direction, right? Yeah, yeah. Instead of you know this, I'm sorry. This was the direction I'm going. Well, I'm not apologizing. In fact, I'm. You know, and we get, like I said, get our butts kicked. Anyway, I find that interesting too. That, um, you know, if we just pay attention during those periods, that we. Um, again with gratitude express I don't, I don't say what we want but um the care and the nurturing that even earth mother you know takes care of us in so many different ways you know that expressing gratitude to her you know for her love and her care you know if i if i may i'm kind of going off on a little tangent here if that's right ahead. This is an open conversation and i love it i have been fascinated on, uh, we're seeing it all over the place. The the Jane, I think it's called the James Webb Telescope. That oh took, yes, I've heard about that. Well, if you get a chance, just I check it out. Deep dived into it. Yet. They took they took basically they took a little tiny section of the universe, like about the size of a grain of sand. And I God knows how I don't understand how they did this, but they took a, an image or a picture of it, and you see. And scientists are still studying it, you know, and, uh, it's hundreds, if not thousands of galaxies. Yeah, in not just stars, galaxies in this little tiny piece. Get this, that most of that light took 4.6 billion years to reach this area we are in. Not only that, but the Earth is not even quite that old. So this stuff was going on before the earth was actually developed. Oh my goodness. Oh, and it goes on and on like that. How, and I've been um, actually obsessing a little bit about it, you know, as I go about <laughs> where, where it puts me is just, wow, what a, well, what a great privilege life mm -hmm. is. We mm -hmm. are so blessed in all of its stuff, suffering included. To have mm -hmm. the experience of life. Masuro Imoto, who was the water guy, studied water mountain. Yes, you know, I loved him when he was on the planet. Now he's uh, in spirit realms. Yeah. He is. He's ancestor. Well, yeah, I call it ancestor too, but spirit realm. Mm -hmm. His last words on his very last breath, Valerie. Arigato. What does Japanese. that mean? Arigato. Japanese for thank you. Ah. Uh. <laughs> what a that blessing. sounds like Dr. Emoto. That sounds like something he would say. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Emoto. Wow. That is magnificent. So that's what we teach, you know, in, in various ways, but is to really appreciate, you know, appreciate the, the experience of life. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I don't know. The Amazon stuff I ordered didn't come on the day it was supposed to. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. It's like, okay, get over it, Stephen. You know, let's move yeah. on. You well, give yourself uh, 15 seconds to whine. That's okay. You know, but know you're doing it. Know that you're Have a little fit and then say, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. let it go. You know, it's like, come on, move on. You know, 
tough to do sometimes. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to um, denigrate that. Um, oh man, again, there's, I don't know what it is, but there's some emotion I can feel behind that. You know, it's, it is sad to me. I feel sad, you mm-hmm. know, about some of the suffering that does go on in the world that is going on right now. But again, that's why I believe we're placed here and that we're called to the mission that we're on is try to bring some balance to it. You know, otherwise, you know, the whole of humanity is going to go down that large rabbit hole. I have have great faith in us and the universe that we will ascend, that we'll all rise together. Yeah. Have that great faith. Some a little ahead of the curve, some kind of dragging along, like, uh, uh, uh. we're all going to ascend. I I have that knowing inside me. I understand. Yeah. It's like, you know, going, uh, meditating in the morning and then. Uh, in that state of uh, bliss or peacefulness or whatever, and then get in my car and I'm going out and driving and then that jerk that cuts me off right in front. <laughs> okay, it, let me get back to that. Breathe. <laughs> you know, but when you do the work, not you, but I mean, generally you, um, when you do the work, though, it gets easier to get back. Even in a little forays like that, like whining. Right? You find that to be true? Absolutely. You know, um, as we conclude, there's a, a teacher, a master teacher that says, the only difference between a master and a neophyte is the speed of correction. So right away, a master has well, awareness that they are in the woods or in the bushes and oh, and it's just a correction. It's not a beating up of self. It's not a, why did I do that? It's not any of that. It's Ah, huh. I'm left. I'm going right. You know, it's just like it's just like that plane, right? That takes off from New York to Paris. It says something like eighty or ninety percent of the time it's off course. It's just continually corrected, corrected, just tacking through, and it, and you land in Paris, and you are off course most of the time. It's just a million tiny little corrections, and yeah. we get. There. Yes. I like that. I, I actually wrote that down. I like that. Oh, and, yeah. The uh, that's true. We're always correcting. Well, we're always correcting, and it's beautiful. And I learned a big lesson that I learned, Doctor Stephen, on this path, is that the more easily correctable I became, I think it's a function of humility, the better it got for me. Like I didn't need a two by four anymore. I didn't need to be abruptly pulled off course. You know, is easily be correctable this just you know go with a tap on the shoulder come this way oh and just come this way and it just has helped me so much in my spiritual path to not be so oh, kind of rigid and kind of yeah. needing some kind of force of the universe to move me to another place we, we can just move gently yeah, you know? yeah. Move gently. i like that i like that so i, I love that you gave us this time today i have oh, a my question pleasure. Uh, yes, yeah, so we want to know how can people get in touch with you? How can they work with you? How can they know more about your work? Well, thanks, Valerie. And again, I appreciate you and I appreciate, you know, um, comments like you just made about the correction. That, that really makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, easiest is my website, of course, DR abbreviation, Dr. Stephen Farmer dot com. On Facebook too, same thing, Dr. Stephen Farmer. That's the be- best way. And I think I'm on, not, I think I am on Instagram as well. So the, all the social media stuff. And uh, you go to the website, you can find what I'm up to, a little m- more about. Um, I've got, if I shameless plug, a couple of uh, new, we new, love oracle. Shameless plugs <laughs> new Oracle cards that are out. I was a really busy during the last year and a half of the pandemic writing and such. Uh, mm-hmm. Messages from the Ancestors is out and available now, Oracle cards. And messages from the spirits of nature, you know, oh. as well as the book. Um, I get to hold it up because Ariel. That's our common sentience. A book part of the common sentience series that. Uh, I love that. So that's available now, and yeah, that's enough. And there's you know the backlog of stuff that you mentioned earlier. So and we're going to uh, link it all below this video on YouTube, of course, so great. that people will be able to get in touch with you and learn more about their totem power and spirit animals i learned i learned some things today i really like it and i like your approach that is not 
it feels more grounded to me and not sort of airy fairy, just go with your intuition because your approach is three pronged approach. It was research. So it was grounded and, and you're grounded in science as a doctor and practicum. I like that. And then, you know, that whole idea of then it goes sort of the spectrum to, okay, direct revelation. So you, you have the science. I like that integrated approach when working with spirit animals. That's really good. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, and uh, triple earth sign, I, I, I'm a little bit more like I had to, I had to learn how to elevate, you know, because <laughs> I'm really grounded, you know, much of the time. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for having me on as a guest. I appreciate that. Of course. Have a beautiful day.